Welcome to Pleasant Green Sunday School. This is Lesson 4 for December the 25th, 2016. We're still in Unit 1, entitled The Savior Has Been Born. Our topic for today, taken from the Adult Quarterly, is Joyous News. The uh, devotional reading is taken from Luke chapter 2, uh, verses 1 through 7. Our background scripture is taken from Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 21. Our print passage today, uh, where we will be studying, is coming out of Luke chapter uh, 2, verses 8 through 20. Our key verse reads, Unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Luke chapter 2, uh, verse 11 from the King James Version. Our lesson aims today, number one, is to remember the responses of the angels, shepherds, and Mary to the birth of Christ. Number two, feel gratitude for God's gift of a Savior. And the third aim is to follow the shepherd's example in sharing the good news of Christ's birth with others. We have three outlines today that uh, we will be discussing. The first one is entitled, The Savior Announced. The second outline is entitled, The Savior Worshipped. And the third outline is entitled, The Savior Revealed. I certainly thank and praise God for this um, yet another privilege that the the Lord has um, uh, bestowed upon me and uh, and you that we are able to come together uh, in this lesson. We certainly want to wish each and every one of you a Merry Christmas, and we certainly thank and praise God for this lesson and the tradition that follows it. Um, but we want to be able to cover a little bit of ground today in this narrative. Uh, we have been um, studying uh, for the last few weeks in the book of Luke, um, Gabriel's announcement to uh, Mary, to Elizabeth, uh, Zachariah's encounter uh, with the angel in the temple, and today we come to this familiar passage taken from uh, Luke chapter 2 verses 8 through 20. I want to read a little bit of the biblical context for this lesson taken from the adult quarterly. Luke is the only gospel writer who dates uh, Jesus' birth with the reign of an emperor. The decree of taxation was issued by the Roman Emperor Caesar Augustus who reigned from 27 BC to um, AD 14 during the taxation period every man had to go back to his hometown where the family records were kept. Bethlehem was the original homeland of David's family and thus became known as the city of David. Bethlehem was where Joseph's family was from. He and his espoused wife were destined for Bethlehem. However, when they arrived they found no accommodations available. The child Jesus would be born and laid in a manger, a feeding trough for cattle. The timing of Jesus' birth and its announcements are important. As taxation <clears throat> um, uh, serves to show the authority and sovereignty of the emperor along with his titles, the angels, however, would introduce the true king not to the royal elite, but to the hard-working, humble shepherds. As we get into these outlines uh, uh, for this lesson, I want to make just a couple of points, uh, some passages of scripture that we will share with you uh, that uh, you need to... Um, at least attach them to this lesson, to this narrative, because it's important to uh, understand how we got here uh, in Luke chapter 2. Um, and we certainly want to mention uh, what every man's future should involve. But uh, Genesis chapter 2 and chapter 3, I know that you 
have read them it's important to to go back and reread these accounts uh, Luke uh, I'm sorry Genesis chapter 2 with the creation of mankind uh, the first Adam and then uh, Genesis chapter 3 um, uh, deals with the fall of humanity or the temptation if you will the sin in the garden um, these two accounts uh, in, in the book of Genesis lead us to the second Adam uh, or Christ if you will um, there were some things that I noticed in going back to uh, creation or the birth of humanity um, and also the fall uh, of uh, the human race the sin in the garden uh, and after uh, Adam and Eve were put out um, of the garden uh, that problem of sin uh, had not been uh, rectified in other words the relationship between God and man had been broken uh, God was never satisfied with that arrangement uh, that was not the creative order that was not the intent uh, originally that uh, God had for his creation um, but because of sin and the separation a remedy had to uh, come forth uh, on a couple of uh, points number one the fellowship uh, with God and man had to be repaired uh, and then the second point from Genesis chapter 2 and chapter 3 uh, particularly chapter 3 the sin problem had to be addressed uh, and so as we get into Luke chapter um, 2 our text today this remedy has come in the person of Christ to do those two things that we mentioned to repair the fellowship uh, between God and man uh, and also to fix or to repair the breach it into the hearts uh, of, of Adam and Eve and, and thus broke the fellowship those two things had to be repaired uh, and this is the reason why we have a savior uh, and we certainly want to make sure we understand what that term means and it means one who who saves uh, it is used uh, with various uh, shades of meaning uh, ranging from deliverer to healer uh, and also to uh, a benefactor uh, and so uh, as we look in the Old and the, two, uh, in the New Testament we see God at work saving his people throughout uh, their generations ultimately bringing us to Christ and Christ coming into the world the second Adam if you will uh, to save uh, mankind from sin to deliver salvation literally means to be snatched out of or to be delivered from the penalty and the power of sin uh, and so the penalty of ultimately is death but it involves separation uh, between God and man I hope that you understand that because this narrative uh, if we if we don't apply these principles it'll just be a narrative uh, to us and we will enjoy this story but there's a reason uh, that Christ has come into the world uh, and then the the third point that I want to mention we have Genesis chapter 2 chapter 3 Luke chapter 2 our text and so the future as we said earlier uh, of every man every man uh, uh, coming into the world is born in sin and shapen in iniquity we understand that from Psalm 51 uh, but the future is uh, what we want to take away from this lesson uh, and the reason why we praise God and you will see that in this lesson and we worship God is because of the, the, the deliverance that has come to us uh, via Christ 
And so what that allows us to do, and it takes us to John chapter 3, and I want you to read that at your leisure, uh, Jesus talking to Nicodemus, he tells him, you must be born again. Why is that? Because we have to learn every believer uh, must understand that we had to start over because of sin. We had to start over. Uh, and then the second thing I want to mention is that every sinner should understand there is no quick fix. There is no quick fix. And there is no way around starting over. Uh, so if you come to Christ, no matter what your age uh, uh, may be, no matter how long you have uh, been in the church, all of these things are irrelevant to salvation. All of us that accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior have to come to a place of a new birth, of starting over. Genesis, we have a creation. Uh, Luke chapter 2, we have a new birth, uh, uh, Christ coming into the world. And then John chapter 3, uh, we have a new birth, uh, uh, Jesus talking about with Nicodemus. And I hope that you see the significance in all of these things of starting over. God starting over uh, humanity in Christ. Uh, 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 this this fall had to be uh, uh, rectified. And so we have Christ in uh, Philippians chapter 2 humbling himself to the point of death, even death on the cross. Uh, and so God highly exalted him. So there's no more fall in Christ. There's an exaltation. So uh, we can see that Christ accomplished uh, what uh, the first Adam could not do. I hope you understand that. Uh, so go back and read those scriptures and, uh, and, and see what the Lord will give you uh, and will open up to you. Our first outline is entitled The Savior Announced. This is taken from Luke chapter um, 2 verses 8 through 11. I think I will read this from the King James Version. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone around about them, and they were sore afraid. Verse 10, And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. Uh, for unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. So we want to pay close attention to this word Savior, because that is the, the official title that God has given unto Christ. Uh, uh, the Messiah, the ex the expected one, the anointed one. Uh, Christ also has this title as Savior. He is uh, coming into the world to address the sin problem that reigns in our hearts and in our minds. Uh, uh, and you might say, "Well, I haven't did uh, done anything, and I'm I'm morally good." But your nature is sinful. Uh, we cannot escape that. And so Christ is coming in to address this issue of sin that plagues all people. It doesn't matter uh, what color, what race we are, what, where we come from, what our backgrounds may be. Uh, this Christ is coming in and the angel tells uh, 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 these shepherds here that this blessing is for all people we're going to talk a little bit more about that as we get along in this lesson but a savior a savior which is Christ uh, the Lord and this is good news for any sinner the good news uh, 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 concerning your circumstance is that there is now a remedy for it there's no longer an excuse to remain in it if you go over in Romans chapter 1 you will see over there that Paul, in dealing with the church at Rome, he says what God has done and, and, and so done uh, uh, in a profound manner, uh, man is without excuse. We don't have an excuse before God because the remedy 
has been born to to take care of the situation uh, that we uh, uh, tend to say to people that I, I did those things because I, I, I was out of control and I couldn't help myself. Well, Christ is the remedy for our sinful ways that goes right to the heart of the problem. It does not, salvation does not necessarily address an aspect of sin. It goes to the root of the sin. Keep that in mind. And this is what Jesus was saying in uh, John 3 to Nicodemus. You must start over. You must be born again, born of the water, which is the word of God and the spirit of God, which is the Holy Spirit. And your reference from John 3 will take you to Ephesians chapter 5. So let us read uh, uh, a little bit of this commentary here. And I also want you to take a look at Galatians chapter 4, uh, verses 4 and 5. In the fullness, when God got ready, he sent help uh, to the sinner to all people. The lesson opens with the hard working shepherds attending to their daily routine. Uh, verse eight notes that they were living in the fields. Uh, this was their lifestyle, being outdoors, uh, attending to their sheep. They were entrusted or trusted to protect in the midst of their uh, of doing their work, serving out their purpose and duty, an angel of the Lord appeared to them. The verse continues with an explanation of how the glory of the Lord was uh, so overwhelmed the men that they became afraid. Again, as God had repeatedly done throughout the unfolding of the birth of Jesus, the angel instructed the shepherds uh, to not be afraid. But this was not a cause for fear, but celebration. Uh, uh, this is why we we celebrate when we come together as children of God. We are praising God because we have a reason to do that. We have a reason to do that because we have escaped uh, the penalty. For those of you that don't that uh, don't understand praise, its root is that we. Uh, uh, we made it for you that are in sin the good news the celebration is that you have a way out there is a way of escape for you you can come out of that situation in Christ you have now access to power that will help you live a victorious life that's why we praise the Lord and so there is a root to our praise uh, but we will share some other things concerning the attitude about praise as we get a little bit further in this lesson so in continuing the angel assured the shepherds that he brought good news that would cause great joy a powerful announcement about the savior was about to unfold uh, the message is one that was long awaited the fact that these shepherds were not the religious elite received the message uh, speaks volumes uh, observed that the angel did not explain where the city of David was located, nor did he explain or define the words Savior, Christ, Messiah, or Lord. The men understood exactly what was being said and the depth of the message. Shepherds, especially in that day, uh, were toward the bottom of the working class, a stark contrast to that of an emperor king shepherds had no power and no privilege this is something that we really want to pay attention to because there uh, in a lot of settings uh, it is believed that 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 we have something that is exclusive to us and not for others but let me say this to you that is a lie because we understand that Christ came to these shepherds because what he had was intended for them. That was a classic mistake uh, throughout uh, Jesus' ministry that the Pharisees, you recall, uh, even Jesus talking to the woman, uh, the Samaritan woman, she said that Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. Uh, so they felt like that uh, the Jews, that they were exclusive uh, uh, their, their father was Abraham. They didn't even need Christ. But they felt like they had something that was exclusive to them and that other people could not participate. But what we are seeing in this lesson is that salvation is inclusive. It is for everybody. It is for the elite. It is also for those who are 
or, or the lower class, if you will. And I love in the family of God, uh, uh, in the body of Christ, there are uh, no big eyes and, and no little use. All of us have a place, even in the Old Testament, uh, I believe Deuteronomy uh, uh, chapter uh, 8, I believe, uh, helps us to understand that God is not a God of partiality. He is not. Uh, and he accepts no bribes. Uh, and so God loves all of us. All of us need to understand that and appreciate what this lesson is for all of us. That's the message today that salvation is inclusive. The uh, question is asked here in the quarterly, share an overwhelming, overwhelming experience or encounter you have had with the Lord. How did you feel? You know, I can remember uh, many times that I have uh, had encounters with the Lord that have uh, just shook me at my core of uh, the reality of his power and of his might and, and of his truth. That if we read uh, uh, even the Old Testament and over into the New Testament, people that encountered God, they fail. Uh, they fail in worship, even at the, the power of the angels coming in. And this is why uh, 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 this angel that is dealing with these shepherds has come with so much power uh, that the, 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 the shepherds are afraid. And the angel is reassuring them, please trust me, when you encounter this power of God, you will know that he is God. Uh, uh, I was, as I was reading this, I was thinking about how faith leads us to experience faith leads us to experience and you will see that further on in Luke chapter 2 where uh, 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 Anna Simeon and Anna the prophetess were they were in the temple waiting on the consolation of Israel and Simeon had been promised uh, by the Holy Spirit that he would not die until he had seen the Lord's Christ and Simeon believed that word to the uh, so much so that uh, he waited for it. Uh, he expected it, and 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 the Bible blesses him and blesses us to help us understand he got it in his hands. He had an experience to see Christ and to hold him even as a child in his arms. The Holy Spirit. Uh, reassured him that he would not die so he believed until he had the experience that God said he would have and that's very important and so these shepherds were told uh, experiencing this power uh, uh, in this announcement to don't be afraid God knows when our hearts are troubled and these shepherds were uh, they were afraid uh, that something tragic would happen but they had to be reassured that this was good this was very good for all men our second outline is entitled the Savior worship this is taken from Luke chapter 2 verses 12 through 15 and so again I re will read this from the King James Version and this shall be a sign unto you ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes lying in a manger and suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying glory to God in the highest and on earth peace good will toward men and it came to pass as the angels were gone away from them into heaven the shepherds said to one another let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord had made known to us. A couple of things I want to lift from um, from this passage. <clears throat> this peace um, that is being announced, um, we won't have time today, but I want you to uh, go to Romans chapter 5. Um, there's a lot being said about peace there are a lot of people that are trying to obtain it uh, through various means. There are a couple of kinds of peace, if you will. The world offers peace, offers security. Uh, it offers things to soothe the human heart and mind, to comfort it uh, in a place where uh, 
the individuals may believe that they are secure. That is not the peace that is being announced here. The peace that is being announced here comes only in the right and through the right relationship with God. You will see that in Romans chapter 5 verse 1 and 2. Uh, when we are justified uh, by faith in God, the Bible declares that we have peace with God. There's no more conflict between the nature, the holy nature of God and the nature of humankind. I hope you understand that because it's very important that until we establish ourselves in faith with Christ that we believe God we believe the message the good news that that is coming even through this lesson through these shepherds and they are on the move to go see they are following they are they it is not mentioned here but they are exhibiting faith because they have accepted it and they are moving so they are being uh, justified if you will even in their actions they're being justified before God by faith therefore they will have peace with God uh, and, and that's very important for us we need to understand that this peace uh, surpasses all understanding is not the peace uh, Jesus says that to his disciples he said my peace give I unto you not as the world it is, this is a difference this is a distinction so I hope that you will study that uh, that this this joy that they have is another attribute uh, we will talk about that a little bit later in this lesson but I wanted to lift that uh, uh, from these few verses here and so these shepherds said to one another uh, let us now go how are they going they're going in faith they haven't seen it but they believe it will be there that they will have the experience that the angel said that that would be there when they get there so they're moving in faith to Bethlehem to see what has been revealed to them the word the faith that they have placed uh, in the word has now moved them from one place to another so you know when they get there we can already see that that they are going to have an experience and we should always remember that as saints of God when we believe what God tells us there will be a manifestation uh, uh, unto you based on your faith based on what you believe based on the word of God that has been spoken to you there will be a manifestation God will bring it to pass so that's what we see here uh, a word has been spoken and the shepherds and and they they are sure they are convinced uh, uh, in verse 15 uh, they are saying uh, uh, let us now go even unto Bethlehem and we're going to see it we're going to see this thing come to pass. We're going to see what has been made known, has been revealed to us through this angel. Uh, this is beautiful. I want you to read Psalm 32, verse 6, when you get time. And also Romans uh, chapter 10, verse 8, 9, and 10. But also in Romans chapter 10, you will see that when you believe, uh, uh, Paul says to the church of Rome, you won't even be disappointed. So this is beautiful to understand. The angel gave specific detailed information regarding where to find the baby. In addition to uh, being in the city of David, the child would be wrapped up and lying in a manger. This sign was given to confirm the faith of those who heard the news. They would find things just as the angel explained it to them faith leads to experience while the shepherds were grasping the details of the announcement uh, a worship celebration began an uncountable number of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel and began to praise God in song those words sent a message God will get the honor of what is occurring men will gain joy from the workings of God and this is uh, 
very important uh, I want you to look at Galatians chapter 5 uh, verse 22 uh, God wants us to know that there there is fruit there is fruit that comes from the right relationship joy uh, is one of the attributes of having the Spirit of God my point is we rejoice and we have joy uh, uh, because we are in right relationship with God and I love this this phrase here this term here that it was caused uh, God caused you to be in the position God caused you to rejoice and, and these shepherds are, are just uh, uh, they're just moving in faith and God is blessing them and also God will get the honor he will get the glory out of the situation we gain the joy from the workings of God all that we have all the good and the joy we encounter rest on the fact that God is in control and worthy of all praise it is because of God that we can have peace and joy knowing that in all things God means it for our good in verse 15 we find the angels leaving just as quickly as they appeared the shepherds did not hesitate in deciding what to do quickly they decided to leave the place where they received the good news and headed straight to the city of David this time they called the name Bethlehem's let's look at today I just want to make a just just a point about what we see going on today and and why some may be discouraged about what is going on in the political arena but let me say this to you God is sovereign God is sovereign over everything and over everyone and I lo- and this is something that we need to understand God is in control and he is worthy of all praise and we have to learn how to get above the situation and praise God because we know that God is God it 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 matters less what he may or may not do this is this situation that happened uh, uh, with these shepherds they didn't expect uh, the angel to show up they are out in the field working and can you imagine uh, at night you're working and the angel of the Lord shows up with a heavenly host and starts telling you that he's getting ready to make changes that is going to benefit the world. It, it, we can never count God out of any situation. And so when it when it was bad for his own people, for Israel, they needed a savior. Everyone had control over Israel. Other nations were uh, uh, were ruling them and 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 uh, taking them captive. But 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 they were waiting for a consolation. They were waiting for comfort to come from God because it had been prophesied. But in the fullness of times, God answered his own word God responded to what he said he would do he gets all the glory and so I take comfort and I want you to take comfort in the fact that whatever God has said to you you have a history book in your mind in your heart in your life you have a history uh, uh, in your relationship with God what has he said to you in your life you must believe that he will it may be at night it may be during the day he may catch you while you're working he may catch you while you're in your car while you're at home while you're walking down the street God can show up on you at any time and do and fulfill what he said he would do in your life he neither slumbers nor sleeps the Bible is clear his eyes are in every place beholding the evil and the good God is fully aware of what is going on and what we need but this these shepherds if you read this story and just imagine in your mind that that an angel is talking to them and they are moving and they're going to see they're going to receive they know something is going to happen they have had an encounter and they are moving by faith 
The question is asked in the quarterly, how often do we rejoice at good news? Can you rejoice at the good news of others, understanding that God's blessings often impact many? That's a good question. So I went to Romans chapter 12, uh, verse 15, and you will recall that Paul says rejoice with them uh, uh, that rejoice. But I looked a little bit further, but genuine unity in the body of Christ is especially evident in the empathy of its members. Uh, or uh, it, This could be in moments of high joy or deep sorrow. We know that as members of the body of Christ, if we have genuine unity, we ought to rejoice with those who rejoice. We ought to uh, 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 weep with those who weep. We ought to be able to show empathy. We ought to be concerned about one another. That what affects one affects us all. This is the genuineness of how uh, God works. And you notice the unity amongst these shepherds. After they receive this uh, uh, uh this announcement that a savior is coming into the world. I didn't read that there was any discussion, any argument, any fighting, any infighting or backbiting. There was unity, genuine unity among them that they agreed collectively to get in on this blessing. And that's where we as Christians, we have to learn how to, uh, 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 to be one. Jesus prayed that prayer for his own in John chapter 17. You ought to read that. Uh, we ought to find commonness and oneness. We are brothers and sisters in Christ. This is the message today. But here, <clears throat> as we get into uh, this last outline, the Savior revealed. This is taken from Luke chapter 2 verses 16 through 20. The Bible says, And they came with haste. They found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad uh, the saying which was told them concerning this child. Verse 18. And all that, uh, that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. Verse 20. And the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. They found the details in the message from God to be exactly as he said. Do you ever look for the details of what God said? If he said it's going to be blue, it can't be red. It's going to be blue. If he says it's going to be tall, it's going to be tall. It's not going to be short. The detail, God knows the end before the beginning. So he can tell you all about what is to come. That is the role of the Holy Spirit that is found in John chapter 16. We're not psychic as believers. But whatever God has said to us, it will come to pass. If he has shown you something, he has brought something uh, and revealed it to you. It will come to pass just as he said. And that's what these shepherds have found. But I, I love this in verse 20. Um, it talked about the shepherds return glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen. And I, I just noted that that qualified them as witnesses. How can we spread the good news? How can we share this if we haven't heard anything and we haven't seen anything? But these are the qualifications of our evangelism and of our witness uh, is that we are credible because of what we say we have heard and what we have seen. And don't be ashamed of that. If God has said something to you, uh, and don't be afraid to, to share that with someone else. But it goes on to say here, the shepherds immediately made the journey to Bethlehem and found the parents and the baby exactly as told by the angel. They wasted no time pondering what to do. This may have been why God sent the message first to them. These working men would get busy doing as instructed. There is a blessing. I just want you 
to note here there's a blessing of obedience that we need to have uh, uh, sometimes things don't work out the way that we want them to but we obeyed uh, we did what the Lord told us to do obedience is better than sacrifice and I see that here uh, with these shepherds that they are just going about the business of believing what they have been told they told all that had occurred to them during uh, the night including the words of the angel uh, there appear to be others to whom they share the good news as the Bible points out in verse 18 but all who heard the saying of the shepherd were amazed at the contents of the message what took place was indeed cause for wonder the wonder and pondering impacted Mary as well her response was to treasure those things in her heart the shepherds yet filled with joy at the opportunity not only to serve but also to be part of a great experience left the manger with an attitude of praise remember I said that earlier and I wanted to make mention of that when we when we get together when we uh, uh, come together do we do we have an attitude uh, when you go to church do you have an attitude uh, to praise God do you do you do you do you just move about a, a, a angrily you, uh, uh, you may not want to be where you are and so you don't really have an attitude but but our root in praising God is found in our attitude it, it is an outward expression if you will of a inward uh, motivation or an inward uh, unctioning by the Holy Spirit uh, and, and sometimes when we don't have a mind to praise the Lord is a reason why we don't praise the Lord it's not because we don't have hands and we can't clap our hands and we have feet but we won't pat our feet we have instruments but nobody will play them and uh, we have a song in our heart and we won't sing it and, and you know and so all of these speak to us not having the right attitude and sometimes it it gets like that but we have to pray for ourselves and ask the Lord to give us a mind to praise him say Lord give me an attitude to praise him why because he inhabits the praise why because he is worthy of all praise why because he has come to remedy and has fixed my sin problem pay the sin debt that I couldn't pay for myself we we can we can come up with a lot of reasons to praise the Lord he woke me up this morning and clothed me in my right mind I mean the list goes on and on and on but it starts with having the right attitude about praising God and I wanted to lift that but here uh, the shepherds they praised and glorified God for the word and the experience of the things unfolded as told to them by the angel this is a powerful lesson and I really am getting so much out of it but praising God is one of humanity's responses to God's revelation of himself so we have uh, had an experience we've had a revelation of God of Jesus Christ of this baby of his salvation of his worthiness uh, uh, of his delivering power in our lives and and we are moved to praise God he is worthy of that you and I it, it's no secret we should have been dead and gone but by the grace of God we have come all the way not just some of the way God's grace and his mercy and his loving kindness has brought you step by step even when you were in sin and I was in sin I had no intention of serving God but he watched over me while I was in the dope houses he kept me when I was sitting in the taverns and when I was driving uh, in, in intoxicated down the streets and the highway God kept me and if you look in your life and you look in your history and you see and you start to take account it wasn't you that kept you but it was the spirit of God that his I, I love what David says in Psalm 23 he says surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and that's what has happened to us goodness and mercy 
has followed you. Did you know that? Did you look around today to see who was behind you? There are two individuals behind you, if you will. Mercy and grace has been following you all day, every day. Jesus says these words, uh, I believe in Hebrews 13, 5. I will never leave you. What did you think he meant by that? And I will never forsake you. What did you think he meant by that? I will leave that with you to think about. You have not been left by yourself ever. Remember that. God bless you. Merry Christmas to you all. I want to just just, just pray very quickly as we move uh, to the next step. Uh, that God will keep you. And that God will continue to do what he has started in your life. Which is to bring you closer and to him and to make us more like him each and every day. Father, we thank you for Jesus coming into this world. I just thank you for how you have kept us throughout this year as we come to the close of another year. We don't know about January of 2017, but today we're here. And we just say, Lord, thank you. Thank you that we are saved today by your grace and by your mercy. And Father, if there's someone today under the sound of my voice who is sick and not feeling well, you are still able to deliver, to heal. And if there's anyone, Father, who is not saved, we know you're able to save. We have it in our lesson today. Jesus came to seek and to save that which was lost. Bless our families today. We know trouble is everywhere and we know there are many going through trials and tribulations but we don't count you out because you're able to do more than we can think that we can ask and that we can even we can even imagine. You're just so great and we love you so. We thank you for it. Bless us oh God as we uh, depart from this this lesson today but keep it afresh in our minds that Jesus is here for us all. We thank you for it and we ask it all in Jesus name. Amen. We certainly thank and praise God for this lesson and for you. Just know that God loves you and so do I. So until such time that will, that the law will permit us to come together again, we say God bless you. <laughs>